Heads up, sneaker family. In this video, we will be fully restoring a pair of bread fours. I'm gonna show you how to take them from looking like this to more like this over here. In this video, we will cover how to perform a full midsole repaint and what to do about minor and major indents or imperfections in the midsole. I'm gonna give you some tape up tips, some detailed cleaning tips, uh, we're going to restore the new buck, and I'm going to do some minor regluing as well, and some bonus content. My name is Footprints, and I'd like to thank you for watching. All tools and supplies used in this video will be listed in the description or in the comments, so please stay tuned to the end. Thank you again. Okay, let's begin by giving the sneakers a general cleaning, just to remove some of the surface dirt and debris. I'm going to be using a Dremel Versa for this task. Next, we're going to remove the old paint by using a glue eraser. Uh, this method is a lot more safer than using acetone or stripper, which can eat away at the midsole if it's older. Uh, it takes a little bit of elbow grease, but it's worth it at the end for the results that you're going to get. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see me using a Dremel Versa which has a sandpaper attachment attached to it. All I did to make that attachment was take a piece of felt and glue it to a piece of 220 grit sandpaper. So you can use that method as well. Once we finish, once again, we'll remove all the dirt and debris with the Dremel Versa. Next, we'll be applying a base coat of white to avoid overusing all of our black paint. I spray pretty thick here like my paint consistency is about, I would say the consistency of eggnog. This allows me to airbrush and minimize the chances of overspray and paint leakage through the tape. I personally use blue painters tape on new buck because if the new buck is old and you use the white masking tape, you're taking a chance of ripping or tearing into the old new buck. So I go with the blue masking tape here, blue masking painters tape. For the air bubble, I just take a piece of toilet paper and then I rip it in half and I fold it over two times. Then I place it over the air bubble and I apply some water and I press it in with a pair of round nose tweezers. Okay, as I'm airbrushing, if I see any imperfections in the midsole, I'll use the baking soda and Gorilla Glue method to fill in any indents or imperfections in the midsole. I'll simply just fill the areas with the Gorilla Glue and then apply the baking soda and sand over the area with a piece of 220 grit sandpaper to smooth things out. For the tight corners and hard to reach areas, I'll attach a piece of sandpaper to a pair of needle nose pliers so that I can really get into the crevices. Next, we'll be applying our black paint to the midsole. Uh, just remember to keep your paint consistency, as I said before, about the same as eggnog to avoid overspray or paint leakage. I use about like a 80-20 ratio from like paint to water or thinner. I don't know what you're gonna be using to thin your paint out, but try to keep it about the consistency of eggnog. Then I'll just pull a needle back on my airbrush gun and I'll spray it on a piece of cardboard to check if there's any debris in the paint. If none are present, then I'll apply it to the midsole. So we're gonna be doing a lot of airbrushing here on and off. I'll be doing about four to five coats of the black. So to prevent clogs in between sets, I submerge my airbrush gun in some solution in a cup. This can prevent about 80 to 90% of clogs. So in between sets, I'll sand the edges of the midsole where the paint meets the tape or any other tight, hard to reach areas just to ensure a nice smooth finish on my edges at the end. Then I'll apply the last coat of black and we're ready to unmount the tape. Here I'm using a seam ripper to get in between the tape to get a nice clean removal. Okay, so once the tape is unmounted and I see any imperfections in the paint job, I'll just get a hobby knife 
and the blade that I made here to scrape along the edges to remove any small minor imperfections. I also used the needle nose pliers and sandpaper method to remove any paint along the edges as well. You can apply water to the sandpaper for an extra cleaning boost. Next, I'll apply water to the air bubble where the tissue was and remove the tissue from the air bubble and clean out the area. Now let's move on to repairing the suede and new bucks. You can use a paintbrush to apply the sealer here, then apply the powder and mat it down, then reapply the sealer again and it's complete. If you have an airbrush, you can use the airbrush method as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is apply the new buck renewal sealer to all the affected areas. Of course, we would tape off the entire sneaker midsole wings and the sock liner because we don't want the powder and sealer to get stuck to any of those areas. So I would just apply my sealer um, to about a whitish grayish coat on top and then I would apply my powder right on top of the sealer. I will also press it in with my hands as we go along. But for now, I'm just gonna just pick the shoe up. I'm gonna get myself a hammer and all the powder that's on top, I'm just gonna just, you know, dust it off into a box because you don't want that powder getting everywhere because it will stain, like it will get like everywhere. It's like a jet black powder. Um, then again, I would just apply more sealer and more powder until I start seeing the new book start to take the form that it naturally has. And then you just repeat, you get your hammer again, knock off that dust because I don't want the new buck renewal powder to clump up. And then I will still press down with my hands as I said before. Finally, I will just apply a nice light coat of sealer at the end. And then I will bang off any um, excess dust or particles and leave it that way. Once we unmount the tape here, after doing the new buck renewal, we're gonna use the same method to clean the edges by using a pair of needle nose pliers and a wet piece of sandpaper. To finish by hand, I'll get a small brush with a square tip at the end and wrap a piece of microfiber cloth around it and spray it with a little bit of soap and water. This gives me the leverage and enough pressure to press up against the midsole to get a nice, clean, sharp look. For the insoles, I just spray on some foam cleaner and then I rub them together um, very vigorously. Here, I'm hand cleaning the lint from the interior of the sneakers by using an eyebrow trimmer. This really works well and you can get into just about any corner of the shoe and they only cost a dollar. You can go to any beauty supply store and find these. For minor touch-ups, like the air bubble portion of the midsole or the edges, I'll just get a small detail bottle from the detail kit and I'll be using the black needle tip attachment to really sharpen things up. Finally, we'll be performing a minor reglue by using the detail bottle and the triangular plastic knife from the reglue kit. The link will be in the description or the comments. This helps me get into all the small hard to reach areas like in the toe cap or along the interior of the sneaker. I make sure to spread the glue evenly here on the midsole and on the uppers, and then I allow it to dry for 45 minutes to an hour. Then I'll make the attachment and we're all done. Remember, prep is key for reglues. If you need any help learning how to properly prep or perform reglues, please check out my eBooks and PDFs on my site. There you'll find everything you need to want and learn about sneaker restoration. Thank you and here are the final results. Okay, here's some bonus content. Just in case your stitching gets um, frayed or bad, you can just use a small torch to hit it along the seams and clean things up. 
Here's a tool I use to clean the interior and the exterior of most of my sneakers. It's a variable speed drill. It can spin clockwise and counterclockwise. And I can adjust the speed just in case I'm dealing with delicate fabrics. Okay, you can also use your detail bottle to fix the trimming of your midsole paint job. Um, if you get any over drip, just use the friction stick to pull the paint off and then just start over. You might have to do this a couple times, but it's worth it. I'd like to sincerely thank you for watching and please go check out all my ebooks and PDFs. Uh, my ebook, How I Made $1,125 in a Month Online, that I dedicated to my sister who's in the hospital battling a severe brain injury. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for these special offers. Hey, check this out. You can get this stuff for free because you can get paid whenever you share. If you want to learn how, just go check out the links in the description and see how you can become an affiliate and start sharing DIY sneaker repair products and get paid for doing it today. You can also earn credits for referring friends. You'll get 15% off and they'll get 15% off too for sharing sneaker repair products, books, and PDFs. Shoot me a comment and ask how, and I'll include my book, How I Made $1,125 in a Month Online Selling Old Shoes Today for Free. So don't miss out on this offer. The number of free ebooks will be limited. Thank you for watching. Hey, my name is Footprints, and again, I'd like to thank you for watching. So here's a little bit about me. I specialize in re-glues and patent leather repairs, and I also can fix the hole in the front of a toe box for like Yeezy 350s or on the side as well. I have a special suede and new buck renewal powder and sealer that's available. And I also do online live classes. I have ebooks available, PDFs, and a whole lot more. So stay tuned and thank you again.